All right, welcome back. And from now till the 6th of November, when the elections kick off in Anambra State, we will be doing this. We are going to be counting down the elections in Anambra State, crucial uh, governorship elections. Uh, Governor Willie Obiano is serving out his second term as um, guaranteed by the Constitution, having won the elections four years ago. So whoever gets into the government house in Oka um, on the, uh, after the 6th of November will be a new one. And there are a number of people who have thrown their hats. But we're talking this morning not just about the candidate, but more importantly about the process and everything around the process because of the uh, unfortunate incidents which have been playing out in the southeast. Um, especially in Anambra State. During the conversation this morning, we have two lawyers, one a lawyer as well as a, a development expert also too. We have Chino Obiagu, he's a senior advocate of Nigeria. It's a pleasure to have Chino Obiagu join us uh, this morning. And Chino Obiagu is also a national coordinator, legal defense assistance project. Fred Nziako is a legal practitioner, is also a development expert. Great to have Fred Nziako join us this morning on News Hub. Good morning, now. Glad to be with you. Thank you very much, Fred. Uh, so first and foremost, Fred, uh, you are a concerned party. You're concerned because you're from the Southeast also, too. And um, what is happening in Anambra State, I'm sure, really talks at your hat uh, because um, we're talking about everything but the election itself, which should bring about good governance for the people. Instead, we're concerned about the security and whether people will turn out uh, to vote because they're scared. Uh, for their lives because of threats and counter threats. What, what, what are your thoughts as we count down to the, the governorship election in a number of states? Um, what's going through your mind, uh, Fred? Uh, thank you, um, Ogogo. I am not just from Southeast, I am from Anambra State. And um, it is my state that is on the march to determination of who becomes the next governor which determination will take place on 6th of November as scheduled so that um, the new uh -huh. governor-elect, when it happens, will be sworn in on 17th of March, 2022. That is the day the tenure of uh, the incumbent governor, Chief Julio Biano, will come to an end and the new governor will take over. But like you said, the process leading to this uh, election has uh, left a lot of worries and a lot of trepidation, in, not only in the minds of the people <clears throat> of Adam State, but also among the electoral management uh, board and electoral management uh, personnel, because of the level of high level of insecurity that has bedeviled the Southeast, inclusive of Adam State, in the past couple of months. And um, it is so worrisome that uh, such level of insecurity, even though now it seems to have um, uh, slightly abated, but um, it is still very worrisome because people are still not very sure or not very clear about uh, the, their safety um, of life and properties as we approach the election. The backlash to this is that uh, uh, pundits have started uh, explaining the situation and giving the impression that there is likely to be very poor voter turnout because of the apathy. Uh, people will naturally want to be very, very cautious and very careful even before the election and on the day of election. And uh, the only way that can be assuaged and that can be improved upon is if there is increased level of uh, citizens' confidence in the security agencies that their lives and properties will be guaranteed before, during, and after the day of election. Uh, that is what we are expecting, and that is what we are hoping and looking forward to. The, 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 the election itself is so important because um, the governor has, is serving us his term and that by the provision of the Constitution, election must take place some days, at least 90 days before the end of the tenure, so that all issues surrounding the election would have been sorted out and the governor be sworn in without stampede. 
And that is what is going on. And uh, if eventually, uh, but adventure, uh, I can say, God forbid, election does not hold, the alternative is uh, too heavy to be imagined. Because that will mean that um, democracy would have broken down completely in a number of states. And that may lead to a state of anarchy, that may lead to a state of emergency, which um, the Attorney General had mentioned, even though he jumped the gun where he said that. But uh, ultimately, if there is no election, that is where it may land the, the state. But it is the duty of the government to ensure that there is an open environment for the people to come out and cast their vote and elect the governor of their choice. All right, thank you once again for being part of the program. Let's take a look at the issues building up towards this election. Um, not just what the... Uh, uh, Malami uh, Monguno, I beg your pardon, did mention last week, uh, but that is National Security Advisor to the President on the fact that the President had given an order to all security agencies to ensure that not only should the election hold, but that there should be peace, relative peace in the land. Uh, you are the son of the soil. Uh, what are you hearing from your people in Anambra State? Uh, government is promising uh, full security. On the other side, proscribed IPOB is saying, dear us, from 5th to 10th, perhaps 11th of November, everyone will have to sit at home. Well, not just what I'm hearing. I am presently in Anambra State. Oh, great. So you can give and, us the um, first hand information. Yes, I'm presently in Anambra State. I've been in Anambra State for quite a while. And that's why you people have not seen me in Lagos. We've been making all efforts to ensure that um, joining hands with um, all concerned parties and stakeholders to ensure that there is relative peace in the state and that election holds. Um, yes, uh, you mentioned the, the indigenous people of Biafra who have said there will be no election. But uh, the snipers we are getting is that there, there's a, there are conflicts. Um, some people say they did not say so. Some people say, yes, they, they did say so. Some people also said that um, even though they had said so, that they had withdrawn that uh, since uh, Mazenam de Kano had been taken to court because the initial agitation and apprehension was that if he was not taken to court, then the, the, the issue would be aggravated uh, because the uh, federal government would have um, caused a lot of um, people to be more annoyed uh, because people are saying that uh, why would you arrest a man that you are accusing of uh, committing an offense and have not taken him to court. First time, second time, and then the third time he eventually went to court. So after going to court, uh, the experience is that the, the, the strife has a bit whittled down. There is an um, increased level of tranquility in, um, in the Southeast, and we hope and believe that such level of tranquility will continue up to the point of election. Yes, the issue of whether there will be pronouncement or that there was pronouncement of sitting at home between fifth, between fourth and the eleventh of November uh, is one that is yet very cloudy because um, some people say no, uh, there, there's no such thing. Some others are saying yes, uh, they made such pronouncement. But it is not left for the people to dwell on, on, on hearsay or guesswork. What the people are looking out for is once they have a feeling of security, once they have a feeling that uh, their lives and properties will be secure, once they have a feeling of safety, then they, they are ready to discharge their citizenship responsibility on the day of election. Thank you very much, uh, Fred Nzako. Let's speak now with uh, Chino Biagu. Chino Biagu is a legal practitioner, senior advocate of Nigeria, and he joins us um, virtually too um, from Lagos. Uh, Chino, thank you very much for joining us this morning, and um, let's get your opening remarks. We're 11 days to the governorship election in Anambra State, and I dare say in recent times, um, the political situation in Anambra State has never been as uncertain as this in the build-up uh, to an election. Yes, thank you very much, Harold, and thank you for inviting me. Uh, well, I agree completely with my brother, uh, Fred, that um, the situation is 
uh, the tension is being eased out um, simply because of what happened in Abuja, Mr. Um, Mr. Um, as, uh, uh, Nandikalo was arraigned and was brought to court. So that provided some level of uh, easing of tension and that's welcomed. But the situation, the security situation is still very, very there in Anambra State. And I think it's important that that is taken care of, that is a no threat because without um, easing of this tension and assurances of, um, of security, citizens will be very reluctant to come out to vote. Um, especially now that there are different, different splitters, splitter groups of IPOP, each giving their directives, different directives. So nobody wants, none of the Anambra and Ambrarians want to be caught in between the crossfire. Um, so it's important that as, as November elections date draws near, that the federal government and security agencies will do more to increase uh, security confidence for citizens to come out to vote. I also want to say that the right to vote and the right to participate in election is a fundamental right of every citizen. And it is important that um, these rights are protected for people of Anambra State. All right, uh, uh, Chino, I I'll still with, stay with you. What you said now, so okay, I mean, it's good enough to imagine that that's what an average Nigerian would think, not even talk about an Anambra at this point in time. But there are present realities that are on the ground, just as uh, Fred said earlier on, there are different voices from, right now it would seem to say, as if to say IPOB uh, has factions, I stand to be corrected, maybe when Fred will answer up to you, uh, he may have to clarify on that particular one. But the people need to go out and vote. And this is one big thing that I will hear journalists, especially our correspondents are also on the ground there, are telling us that some people are really scared. What do you think the Anambra State government should be doing at this point in time to ensure that the voters turn out when November 6 comes? Well, frankly, I think the, the matter is beyond the Anambra State government. I think the state government has lost it completely. Um, the security situation, the issue of um, who commands the loyalty of the citizens when it comes to coming out to vote and sitting at home and all that. Of course, it is IPOP. There's no doubt about that. When they say people should sit down at home, everybody sits at home. So de facto, they, they, they detect um, the situation of human, not because they have the, the legal right to do so, but because you know people are not, don't want to be caught in, in, the, in the gun violence that may follow, follow if there's an outrage with security agencies. So it is not a matter for the Anambra State government because the Anambra State government does not control the security apparatus of the country. Uh, even though the governor is said to be the chief security officer of the state, he does not have a direct command. He does not have a direct control over the police, over the SSS, DSS, or, or the military. So at the end of the day, it is the federal government uh, who has the apparatus of security agencies that should strategize and see how they can deal with it. And I must say that it is not, it, 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 if you look at the history of controlling violence, civil violence in this country, force, sheer force has never worked. Fire for fire has never worked. I mean, we have cases in Niger Delta and so on. So it is a situation where um, we can, can begin to use intelligence, we can begin to engage the leadership of IPOP, engage key stakeholders, and, and talk about how it was the way forward. Because if you bring a, you know, a million battalion of soldiers on the street of Anambra State, people will still be scared because nobody wants to come out when the streets are militarized. You know? um, so militarization is not a strategy to bring peace or relative peace for the election. I think it is to engage in dialogue with the stakeholders, get involved with state governments, get involved with political leaders, get involved with IPOP leadership if they are identified. And um, and organize and all these key stakeholders sit down and say, listen, the consequence of not holding election is much more grave than the than the consequence of holding election. Because if you don't hold the election, just like Mr. Uh, Mr. Fred Mr. Kala said, it will lead to anarchy and then lead to declaration of state of emergency, and the state will be worse off for it. So if we can raise those superior arguments and um, ask people, ask those who are holding the guns to lay down their guns and let the election go on. That may be more effective than neutralizing the streets of, of Anambra State.
Chino, I'd like for you to also react to that, uh, Fred. He, you are on the ground. He says it seemed to him, if I didn't say it seemed to him, he said that uh, the state government seemed to have lost the grip of what is going on. Is that what is happening in Anambra as we speak? Well, my, my, my Leonard and brother, senior advocate, Chino Diagu, has said it so simply. Not only the Anambra state government, but almost the old southeastern governments have lost it. They lost it because they did not take, they did not nip the issues in the board. <clears throat> they did not uh, make a while the sun while the sun was shining. They did not. Um, they say a teaching time saves nine. They did not begin to teach the the patch in time, and then it has turned in nine places. At this point, from the look of things, it is not likely. That there is enough time for dialogue anymore. <clears throat> because what we are hearing is that the IPOP um, leaders are saying that it is only Mazen and Kano that can give an order for an election to take place. And he will not stay in 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 the gul in, in the in the in the gulag of of uh, of the SSS in the custody of SSS in about that uh, we'll get back uh, to Fred and Ziako once uh, we clear out the solution to give such other uh, 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 a condition that for Namde Kano must come out before they will sign such order but then like my brother said it, it seems to me and it seems to most people that is one section of the leadership that is making such demands and then another section is um, not on the same page with them on, on that. But the challenge is, which one do the people believe? And what will eventually be the reaction of the people? And nobody will want to be caught in the in the crossfire. The president has given a marching order to the National Security Advisor and to all the security agencies to go and ensure that the election is conducted. Election is about people. And um, the, the people is about their lives. So if life, is not guaranteed if security and safety are not guaranteed the people naturally may not want to come out and uh, like i said earlier uh, from what we are seeing if this level of tranquility and uh, and, and ceasefire is maintained going forward uh, we may see slight improvement but then in a bid to to do a show of force in a bid to to show that the government is ready to protect their lives and property, and they flood the street with security men and women and the, and forces. That on its own may also be counterproductive. So it's a very delicate balance that the government may, must have to strike uh, between um, uh, flooding the place with security agencies and then um, ensuring that the confidence of the people is, um, is saved so that the people will be able to come out and uh, cast their vote. Although every election is local, local in the sense that people will, there will be no movement on that day. Normally, there are no movements on election days uh, between 8 and the 2, uh, and the 2 p.m., at least 3, 4 p.m. of that day. But um, such no movement will also help the security agencies to man the flash points and ensure that the, the possibility of, uh, of infractions of uh, the peace of the people will be will be arrested but um a, a delicate balance need to be struck and like my brother said i agree with him that more of intelligence need to be deployed than open show of force such that um, those people who are likely to cause a breach of the peace uh, would have been monitored and possibly um caged so that um election will be allowed to take place all well, right. and going forward, um, on a slight um, uh, shift, the issue is mustn't all be about the election. Election is very important, but more importantly, Nigerian state must look into the issues that have given rise to all these grievances and all these agitations, so that we don't begin to operate on a knee-jerk approach uh, without solving the problems fundamentally. Fundamentalism. In problem solving is very important than um, 
curing the symptoms and living and living the base. All right. Uh, we will still come back to that because it's very important that we really dissect what the underlying factors uh, that built up towards where we are at this point in time. Uh, but at this point in time, if you remember last Thursday, there was a, a security uh, council meeting at the State House in Abuja, after which uh, the National Security Advisor, Babangana Mungunu, addressed journalists. That was where he disclosed to uh, the nation that, well, the president had given an order to security chiefs to ensure that not only would the a number election hold on the 6th of November, but there must be peace. Let's take a look. In as much as the government wants to conduct peaceful elections, there are non-state actors who have been heating up the polity, who have made all kinds of attempts to stymie orderly elections for next month. The president has directed that under no circumstances will anything be allowed to stop the elections from taking place successfully. And uh, we want to assure the people of Anambra State and indeed all Nigerians that the government is committed to conducting that elections and it has to be free and fair. Uh, we are going to put every machinery in place to ensure that uh, people are well secured and uh, we are going to dominate the uh, place to ensure that uh, uh, this place is calm and quiet to provide for a free and fair elections and uh, that is the only the way to ensure that we promote democracy and good governance in this country. The reports coming in are indicating that uh, well, even though the bandits are there, but uh, they, are, they are moving to us areas where uh, there are no, there are communications that they can talk to people. But uh, the situation is improving even in those areas. Of course, the situation is still not as good as we expect it to be, but uh, we are on top of the situation. All right, thank you. Uh, Chinobi Agu, let me come back to you on the, all of these. Well, the federal government had uh, made known uh, its stand on the fact that no retreat, no surrender. We're going for this and nothing will stop us from conducting the election on the November 6th. Meanwhile, the electoral umpire, INEC, at a different times, I remember earlier this month, came out to express fears, I mean worries, better put, however you want to you see it, on the rising insecurity in the state. How do you see the umpire really performing? Uh, one would imagine that there will be heavy militarization or heavy presence of security personnel uh, in an umbra state to ensure that people can have enough confidence to go and vote. What about the ad hoc staff? What about other things that have to be put in place? What are you thinking? What are you seeing, Chino? Well, I think the, uh, the assurances from the National Security Advisor is very welcome. Um, it is really heartwarming for a lot of people in Amra State. That um, uh, it shows that the security agencies, the leaders of, of the security apparatus in this country, are beginning to strategize on how to deal with that. Remember, it is not that simple to, to stay in Abuja and say, oh, we're going to do everything to have a fair, fair election in Anambra State. Uh, the, the, the security leaders must put in place uh, effective strategies that will make that to happen. And, um, and it's a combination of factors. I mean, these are security experts. They should know what, what, kind, what kind of things to put in place to, to reassure the people that they can still come out safely and vote, and uh, the vote will be counted. And that is very important, especially for INEC, the electoral manager, because INEC deploys ad hoc staff to pulling units and um, nearly a hundred thousand plus pulling units and number of states we have these uh, ad hoc staff um, you know handling those elections they need to be pro protected most of them are you coppers most of them are civil servants most of them are teachers they need to be protected and um, and i think that is very important so the federal government was put in place Street, very robust strategy to deal with this issue. And as I, I said earlier on, it's not just about deploying soldiers, it's also about engaging the non state actors. It's also about looking at other alternatives, thinking outside the box in this context. Because 
let's face it, the security situation in Anambra State is very, 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 you know, very, very there. And um, the federal government, you know, stayed back and watched this thing get out of hand all these months. Um, it, it, IPOP has insisted that Muslim and the must be released before the election. But the apparatus of criminal justice system has already kicked off. He has been arraigned in court. He has been brought to court. And um, it is it, it, a legal matter. It's a constitutional thing that you have to follow the legal process to get that case done with. Uh, so I, I think there is a constitutional uh, uh, dilemma now, that uh, legal dilemma that is both the federal government and the state government and INEC and all the stakeholders, political parties, all these, everybody concerned, must sit down and strategize on how to deal with this. Uh, having said that, I think it is important to reemphasize that Anambra state people have their constitutional right to vote in this election and to select their leaders. Otherwise, it will be an anarchy and it will have its own consequences that may not be favorable to the state. Uh, Fred, Fred Zako, you, you wear two hats. You're a development expert also, as well as a, a, a legal practitioner. If you think about, since you're in an Anambra state, you've had the opportunity to also see what's happening on the campaign trail. Many of the issues involving the insecurity in the Southeast uh, go beyond um, IPOB. It's majorly developmental issues where people have cried about marginalization uh, for several years, and you've seen the numbers now um, in unemployment and increased um, urban um, gang violence happen uh, across um, the southeastern part of the country. Have you been able to hear from the people who say they want to govern a number of state from um, next year on how they can handle many of these issues from the bottom uh, to the top? Yes, um, are you there with me? Yeah, with you, Fred. Please go ahead. Yes, thank you. Um, unfortunately, um, Arogo, the, the security situation has not allowed for the aspirants to have robust engagement with the people. Um, uh, people have not been, they have not freely associated with the people in terms of their campaigns. In fact, uh, the campaigns have been more or less like uh, guerrilla campaigns, clandestine campaigns, um, uh, somebody lacking it to, to offshore politicking. And that is why you see a lot of them going to meet the Anambra in various other states, Lagos, um, um, Potakot, Abuja, and the rest of the places. But the people down here in Anambra State and the Southeast have not had the opportunity to hear firsthand from those who aspire to lead them, and because of uh, the state of insecurity. So what politicians have resorted to is to do what they call door-to-door -door campaign, using their agents to move around on foot to go and talk to the people in their locality. All right, thank you so much for that. I'd like for you to complete on that because I know that there's still a lot you'd like to tell us. Uh, Bear in mind that you're right there on the ground. Oh. Okay, please go ahead. All right. Yes, this kind of uh, campaign structure where you see... All right, uh, Fred, let's try to reestablish contact with you. It seems as if there are uh, some technical hitches there with the network with you. Chino, the same question comes to you. If you are in a number of states at this point in time, uh, the electorates are there, they want to listen to what the uh, candidates will have to say, we still commit to the candidates and all of that. That's another button, <laughs> kettle of fish entirely. But what, what, what are those things you expect to see the candidates bring to the table uh, to really ensure that the numbers get the dividends of democracy as we speak? Chino. Yes. Um, first, I, was, I want to say that the priority of our number of people now is, is security. And um, candidates should, you know, we expect that the, the candidates for this election should prioritize how they will you know, bring in peace and relative, um, you know, uh, uh, relative normalcy in the state. 
as you know, with all these insecurity, people are no longer are no longer going about their businesses, you know, as they should. The economy is going down. People are losing their jobs, especially in, in, within the informal sector. Uh, people are not able to go out and work. Um, so security should be a priority. Of course, in Anambra State government has had a track record of good governance. Started, started from Ige up until Pitobi and the present government. They've tried to improve. Is unarguably the most improved state in the southeast in terms of infrastructures, education, and health, and so on. So building on that legacy is important, and candidates should be able to tell the number of people what they can offer in dealing with that. But having said that, the electionary campaign in Anambra State has not really been what they were, because people have not really had the rallies. I mean, the few rallies that they've been organized to engage with the people uh, has been disrupted by violence. And uh, when such rallies are organized, even the electorate are very reluctant to come out to listen to these candidates. But there are still other means of reaching out to the people. There is the social media, there's radio, there's television, there are other um, avenues which messages are sent out to people. So um, the, the candidates, the prominent candidates in the, in the election are uh, continuing to read out their manifesto. And if you look at most of the manifestos of the candidates in that election, they prioritize security. They prioritize, they prioritize peace and good governance. And that is a work on development. But whether they can, whether they will have the capacity to deliver that is a different ball game. Because at the end of the day, the federal government needs to get involved deeply. Because federal government cannot allow, cannot afford to allow the Southeast to degenerate. Uh, already we're having problems in the Northeast, um, in the Northwest, North Central is also the burning in the Benue Plateau area. Uh, we just finished a uh, thousand detention in Niger Delta. And here we are with the Southeast. So they cannot af afford to allow the Southeast to degenerate into anarchy. Um, uh, they must look deeply into the fundamental issues that is causing this discord. Issue of fiscal federalism, issue of fairness in, appoint in political appointments, issue of uh, fairness in distribution of resources of the, of, 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 the, of the country. These are some of the issues that are breeding this agitation. And I think it's important Nigerian states sit down and talk about it. There is nothing difficult in sitting down to renegotiate the Nigerian state and to say, where are we? If we're going to remain as one country, what are the conditions? Let us create a fair balance. Let us create a fair criteria to dealing with all the issues that has been raised in the agitation, not just in the southeast, but also even some pockets of agitation in the southwest, uh, agitation in the south south, and so on. So, um, having a good federalism, a balanced federalism that will give everybody a sense of justice, a sense of fair play, uh, a sense that they belong to the same uh, commonwealth, is important. And I think federal government must face that reality and deal with it. And if that discussion can start on, I guess it will help to reduce the tension across the country and reduce these claims for self-determination. Thank you, Chino. Uh, Fred and Zako, as we peer into this chess board and watch the gameplay that happens with the different actors and what is possible and what is not possible in the lead up to the election, there are people who look at the governor, not just of Adambra State, the outgoing governor, but all the other governors of the four remainder southeastern states and say that they perhaps could have done a lot better in um, bringing assurance and confidence to the people of the southeast and in Anambra State in the lead up to the election saying that we have what it takes to protect you, your lives, your property as it's enshrined in the constitution and as our roles as uh, governors and chief security officers of the state. You think it's fair when people say that they haven't exactly lived up to expectations and also partly responsible uh, for some of the problems going on, especially with the anxiety and the tension in the lead up to this election? The feeling of the people, the feeling of the people is that the governors have not done enough. And why the people feel so is because they feel the governors have not presented their agitations very well uh, at, the, at the foot of the Asorok. So that um, the, the Federation of Nigeria, as led by the federal government, should look into their agitation and look into their complaints and ensure that their cries from, uh, against marginalization 
injustice and uh, lack of equity and fairness have received uh, considerable attention. And when the people begin to feel like that, they begin to lose confidence in their governors. They begin to lose confidence in the capacity of the governors to fully represent their interests and present uh, 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 their, their opinions adequately. And that is why they seem to, to listen to non-state actors more than the state actors. Even though some, to some people, the spirit of violence has made them, it has become an adherence just for safety. You adhere to certain instructions for you to be safe. Uh, because of the old adage that says, he who fights and runs away, leads to fight another day. So but nobody would like to be the fall guy or the scapegoat in a crossfire between the North state actors and the state, and the state itself. But the governors themselves are said to be the chief security officers. But in essentially, the, it is only uh, by my pronouncement. Um, they don't have capacity and control over the instrumentalities of state security. Um, the Army, the SSS, the Navy, the Air Force, the police, the civil defense, and all intelligence agencies, uh, the DMI and the rest of them, all of them are in the hands of the federal government. And that is why we continue to, uh, to, to advance and advocate that the kind of federalism that we practice is a, is a quasi-unitary military federalism. And that is why we continue to ask that let us advance through, through, to, through fiscal federalism by way of restructuring. No matter how anybody looks at it, the engagement of, of the citizens in, on a round table and then uh, proper issues of negotiation of the way we are and the way we want to be uh, is, uh, cannot be overemphasized and cannot be swept under the carpet because if you arrest one issue from today and that issue raises its ugly head the next day because the system is not functional. A dysfunctional system can only be restructured and made to be functional. It cannot be wished away, neither can it be pushed with the barrel of the gun, because the more you push it, the more it comes like a hydra with so many heads. A, 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 a hydra-headed monster cannot be solved or cannot be killed with the barrel of the gun. It is intelligence network. It is a, it is a, a negotiation and dialogue. It is sitting down on a round table looking each other eyeball to eyeball and fashioning a way of solving this problem that will help Nigeria. We have been on this for decades, and then the end is not in sight. So why would we continue to do the same thing all over again and expect a different result? Okay. I think time has come for Nigeria as a nation to sit together and discuss and talk to themselves how do we move forward in the face of all the daunting challenges that we have all around the country from east to north to west and to the central it cannot be wished away all and right. the earlier we begin to think in that direction the better for the country fred i'm going to stay with you and so the reason being that that you just said now that you wish for government to uh be go to the round table and discuss with people uh per, for, i'd like for you to make clarifications are you in another way trying to refer to the instance we have in a number of states where, for instance, uh, a group has been proscribed by the government and the group, uh, we seem to factionalize that at this point in time. Maybe a part of the group is really calling the people not to go uh, and vote while the other is saying, I'm not saying. Are you saying that the, the government should go into talks with those planning to disrupt the election in a number of states? Is that what you're trying to say? I made, a, I made a general statement about the whole country because that was what I said. There are agitations and problems not east, west, and south, and central. It is not only in the southeast, but we have problems and challenges of inequity, of marginalization, of uh, lopsidedness and injustice all around the country called Nigeria. But um, since we are focusing on Anambra State, which is in the southeast, I do not think personally that uh, IPOB is factionalized. Um, I do not think so. I'm yet to be corrected. Um, I think what is going on is that there are 50 communists within the system 
trying to claim to represent IPOP and then trying to use um, uh, uh, the forces of negativity to present IPOP as if they are factionalized. But what is important is what is the people, what are, are the people saying? What is what opinion are the people experiencing? And what opinion are the people obeying and listening to? For whatever it is worth, I keep saying, and many people keep believing so, that this tag given to IPOP as a terrorist organization is a very major problem bedeviling the system because it is a tag that is given in bad faith. As at the time government gave such tag, it was very obvious that IPOP did not come close to anything terror because they said they have only flag in their hands and songs in their mouth agitating for referendum and self-determination. I do not understand why government would want to kill a fly with a sledgehammer. And they have not succeeded in doing that. Instead, what they have now caused is in higher tension, increasing tension. Today, every Monday, the whole of Southeast sits at home. It is crippling the economy of the Southeast and, and, and obviously by extension, it is affecting the broad domestic product of the country. So it is, does not pay anybody. It does not uh, 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 benefit anybody in any way. And that's why I say that government have to start to sit down and talk with the people. It is not only the IPOP that needs to be dialogued with. The group led by Sunday Boho in Southwest that are also in the agitation. The Middle Bed Forum are in agitation and they are complaining. The people of South South are also agitating that they are complaining that the, the cleanup that they claim they are giving to them, that nothing is going on. There are tensions all over the place. Why can't we sit together and discuss this country called Nigeria? That is what I'm talking about. And that discussion has a very big, robust opportunity under the paradigm of restructuring. We have six geopolitical zones, and why not we make these six geopolitical zones six administrative zones? And then really practice the American federal system the way it should be practiced. We borrowed it from America and we left behind the ingredients, the basic developmental ingredients of American style democracy. What we are practicing today is a pseudo quasi lopsided, upside down, fake federalism. And that is why it is not working. The earlier we make it to work, the better for the country. Thank you very much, Fred and Zako. We're going to go on a quick break. and we come back, we continue with uh, Fred and Zako and Chino Obiago. Please stay with us on News Hub. you closer to the people we take the pressure off you each with his uniqueness it's no holds barred say it the way it is with the unitary system of government people will steal our money in the state they will use the federal apparatus to intimidate them was built to shock, timid, myopic, Mongo package, Mumu Nigerians out of their way of thinking.
The project intends to give Nigerians a chance to have a better understanding of the possible choices for the exalted position. As many as 60 individuals, both men and women, have been identified by the Silverbird Editorial Board as probably having their eyes on the presidential seat for 2023. Some of the basic requirements for the position of Nigeria's next chief executive would include, but not limited, to being intelligent, having robust health, and being humane. Such an individual should be a good communicator, a detribalized personality, good listener, a bridge builder, and someone who has a better understanding of Nigeria's fault lines. The selection process is on the way and is being effected by Silverbird's editorial board. Ten names have been dropped from the original list due to a number of reasons which include not showing any interest or their outright decision to stay away from partisan politics or lack of ambition. Interested aspirants will also be added once they are identified. The process will continue until only six individuals of no particular political party or political leaning are identified and unveiled at a later day. Our viewers and listeners on Silverbird News 24 and Reading FM radio stations nationwide should keep abreast and familiarize themselves with the profile of Nigeria's probable contenders for president in 2023. You can also visit our social media handles for more details. Thanks for staying with us on News Hub. We're still taking a look at the upcoming Anambra election, which holds on November the 6th, 2021. INEC already released 18 uh, parties who participating in that election. And we remember that uh, the primaries held across party lines brought about a lot of drama here and there, uh, which led to INEC really ratifying, after all the legal tussle, uh, ratifying the list and bringing all those candidates that will be flagging the uh, the, 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 that will be the flag bearers of the parties come November the 6th. All right, let's come to you now, Fred. You are on the ground, you're on ground there. Uh, what are you seeing with other political parties? We know that in Anambra State, APGA is the ruling party. Uh, of course, PDP can't be ignored. APC is the ruling party at the center. And other political parties we hear also are, uh, you know, muscling up to see what could happen come November the 6th. What is going on? Well, without sounding um, partisan, and uh, with due respect to all contending political parties, no party can be said to be taking the lead as we speak. Um, uh, the general impression is that the ruling party, Abga, has not done to the, uh, uh, very well, has not done well to the expectations of the people, and that is why there is a massive defection of major critical officers and stakeholders of ABGA to other political parties. Um, uh, ABGA on each side will put up a defense that those ones are living because of their selfish political interests. And that is why when it comes to politics, uh, they are one and one, one plus one is never two. It can be anything but two. And uh, because everybody will want to advance his cause the way and manner he feels um, better. Um, but be that as it may, all political parties are contending, uh, the major ones and then the, the underdogs. And as we speak, because uh, people have not been able to, there have not been this open, robust campaign, uh, you will not be able to gauge the temperature and the public opinion of the people, especially the voters. Uh, but um, whatever it is worth, one thing is very clear that because of the challenges of security, the election will be too close to call, such that the margin of victory will be very slim. And because the law does not have a basic minimum voting before anybody is declared, whatever the number that comes out to vote must be the ones to determine who becomes the next governor, provided the constitutional spread of two thirds of the state is met, and then the person has the highest number of lawful votes. We have 21 local governments in Anambra State. So anybody who has gotten 25% of votes 
in 14 local government areas has met one leg of the constitutional requirements. And if such person also has the highest number of lawful votes, then the person automatically has become uh, elected. So uh, uh, people should not expect very large number this time around because of uh, the likelihood of voter apathy because of the state of affairs as we have it today. All parties are, are contending, and then uh, you cannot um, undercarpet any party at this moment in time. I can take this out. Uh, Achino Obiagu, the, um, I, I, I remember the last election that happened, the voter turnout was, was uh, just about 22%. I was just going through it again, and um, shocking. And the, um, the Anambra state has never had uh, a voter turnout even up to 25% in previous elections. Save for the one which was uh, cancelled, it was eventually cancelled because of electoral fraud. So if you take out the 2007 election where, uh, where Kit Chris Ngige was uh, elected uh, uh, governor, you have all elections from then onwards, uh, voter turnout less than 25%. What, what are your thoughts if um, this repeats itself uh, on the 6th of uh, next month? What does that do for the, uh, for the, uh, for the one who's won the election, knowing that um, he had less than his prede predecessor in uh, being elected into office? Yeah, well, I mean, on the average, the voter turnout in Nigeria has been very low, um, and um, not just in a number of states. And that undermines the uh, um, citizens' confidence in the electoral process. Uh, it shows that a lot of people don't believe that people, their leaders are elected through the voting process. And some say, well, why bother to go and vote? You know? So uh, it's also about leadership, it's about governance. It's a governance issue. And um, when we talk about electronic voting, it's also a way of improving voter turnout because if people can vote electronically, then they don't need to risk their life going to the polling vote because we know high level of violence takes place in the political um, among the political society. So it's a combination of violence, it's a combination of apathy, it's a combination of bad governance and um, and the loss of confidence in the electoral process. We haven't said that um, even if the voter turnout in a number of states. Um, this time around is less than what it was, like you said, 23 or so percent, which we expect this time around to be much less because there is a prevailing threat to security. And people have said, don't come out. A lot of people won't venture to come out. Before, when there's election, people who live outside that number of states will return to vote. Now, I don't think anybody will venture to do that. Most people will not, especially the those who are actively engaged in the political, in the political party. So there are going to be a drastic reduction in the number of voter turnouts. But that does not undermine the election because the electoral law did not stipulate a minimum of voter turnout that will predate an election. It does not. It simply says the uh, number of local government that must be won by the candidate that wins the majority vote. So voter turnout is not a criteria for pronouncing electoral victory. Um, so even if this, the development is very low, as low as even 5%, the, the NAC, I mean, we don't expect that to happen because we think that if the, as a, if, um, if the election, the, on the election, they normally movements are restricted across the country, across the state. So people have their polling units within their vicinity. So we expect that people can be mobilized to walk to their polling units. Sometimes they're walking distance, trackable distance and vote. Um, so they don't need to travel far away. Uh, so there's a, there may be, a, 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 you know, um, surprisingly, there may be a high voter turnout because people would just simply walk to across to their polling units and cast their vote and go back home uh, because there will be a complete um, uh, curfew. I mean, if you like, or, or step, you know, um, or that no, no movement within the period of the election, which is from. 8 o'clock to about 2 p.m. in the afternoon. So if we have um, that kind of situation, people come out to vote, is it to be a welcome development? But the question is, are the people really, in, in, do they really know the candidates? Do the candidates have the opportunity to meet the electorate, tell them what they want to do for them? Will the choices be, um, you know, will the choices be, be, be based on programs and not on, on sentiment? 
whatever happens, the number election has gone, and we do think that the federal government must do their best to ensure that there is an atmosphere of peace for that election to go on. There's nothing wrong. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Dialogue has always been a welcome development to start talking to people. Yes. All right, you know, thank you so much. We're coasting home at this point in time. Uh, Fred, well, Annex says 2.5 million Anambrans have registered to their registered voters in, in the state. However, you remember that the continuous voter register uh, exercise, continuous voter register exercise is still a registration exercise, I meant to say, uh, still uh, ongoing. The first quarter we heard that there were some efforts by some people to uh, register multiple times and that uh, INEC was able to really discover over 62,000 of them and we hear that although they still have their PVCs, they'll be able to vote, but INEC would not print out a new PVCs for them. That would check multiple voting or any kind of uh, electoral fraud that could be uh, planned to be carried out on that uh, day. Let's take a look at the Electoral Act as it pertains to what you expect on the November the 6th. Uh, as it stands at this point in time, INEC has the right to transfer election results electronically and some other issues that INEC, I think INEC has been empowered according to uh, what you hear at this point in time to really conduct a good, free, fair and credible election in a number of state. Is this what you're seeing at this point in time? Well, Anambra State is uh, election is a one is a one-off election. It's the only state where there will be election on that day, uh, 6th of November. So INEC um, will mobilize all its um, capacity and resources to ensure that um, uh, the election is conducted very well, free, fair, and very credible. Uh, the issue of um, uh, of the voters, yes. Over 2.5 million, about 2,522,429 uh, voters have been uh, have been um, registered so far, but the voter registration has been stopped. It has been seized until after the election. As a matter of fact, if anybody goes to INEC today to get registered, such a person will not succeed because INEC has shifted its um, assignments towards the election and no more towards uh, registration of voters. So any voter who has not by now been, uh, he that before now been voted, registered, can no longer be registered. Then INEC will now deal with the number that has already been registered. The challenge is that how many of them will even come out to vote? Um, my brother said, and I agree with him, that the, the even on normal grounds, the, 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 the voter turnout in Nigeria has been very, 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 very abysmal, very, very abysmal. And uh, let us just hope that with uh, increased voter education and awareness, that that uh, figure will improve over time. Um, it's a combination of many factors, and those factors need to be addressed and uh, solutions found for them. Uh, what we expect in Anambra State on, 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 on that day is, uh, is an election, and nothing more than that. The transmission of results, I next said they will do electronically. The ZPAD has the capacity to do that, and then even the card reader also has the capacity to do that. INEC may deploy a combination of both equipment and um, uh, accessories to ensure that election results are transmitted. But that would be very good, because that the challenges of um, adulteration of election results, which is called rigging, will, uh, would uh, be uh, eliminated, at least uh, very, very minimally. So we expect to have a very fair, credible election in Anambra State. It's been great speaking with you, Fred and Zako, a legal practitioner, Fred and Zako, who joined us from Anambra State. Thank you very much, uh, Fred and Zako. Many thanks. Excellent. And uh, Chino Obiago, a senior advocate of Nigeria, it's always a pleasure speaking with you also to touch bases with you now and again. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Chino. Just as he said, you know, when the issue came out, I guess it was the last Friday before we came out, the following Monday, yeah. on analyzing the Electoral Act as, uh, you know, reacted by the Senate, which yeah. had to say that, well, electronically, electronically now you can transfer results. There is a clause there that says that maybe, I, not maybe, I can now, you know, determine what method of 
voting they want to adopt. Yeah. Maybe it's high time I, I next started to think about electronic voting because yeah. if people can vote electronically, they won't have to bother about security challenges. In there, from the confines of their homes, they can decide to vote from there. Mm. All right. Mm. Okay, so as something very special happens today, uh, a very special woman of substance by all standards uh, celebrates her birthday today. And that's the second time I'll be joining during the celebration is Mama Bruce's birthday today. Hey. And <laughs> I'm here hey. to meet her. But I hear how warm and wonderful she is. Uh, who did she look at the seeds? You can tell, you know, what a woman is made of when you see the seeds. Congratulations, Ma. May you live long and well. Uh, may you continue to be strong and happy all the days of your life. Absolutely. She shares her birthday with my father also, too. Oh, no. Dad's yeah. birthday is today. Yeah, happy birthday, birthday, Daddy. And uh, happy birthday to the old man. And, and uh, you know. Yes. And so. there's also my niece's birthday today, my wife, Kulola. I think great people were born on the 26th of yes. October. Yeah. Happy birthday to you all also in case you join us and it's your birthday today. We love you all. Absolutely. Happy birthday, everyone. And I go, I go to fest, I can celebrate with my folks later on. But that's it, the way we do it. Absolutely. <laughs> I am sure we did. You have a beautiful day. And I am our almost. Pasiba das Dania. It's how he says it. Come bring that this cake, Joe. What's yeah. that one? Yeah, <laughs> that's how we say it also, you know. Spasiba. Bye bye.